Hello everyone. Today I want to talk about making your own graphgan pattern and starting off in small chunks instead of jumping right into a giant project for your first attempt. So this is my uh, owl and he is about 10 inches wide and about 13 inches long. Now, what I did, this is all single crochet. What I did was I went and I did a Google search for an owl silhouette. And this is what I found. Now, I don't know if I can get this into frame or not. It's not exact, but it's pretty similar. So I got the, found the owl silhouette that I liked and I uh, printed it out. And then I took a piece of graph paper and placed it over top of it. Now like this, you really can't see much, but if you have a light box or you could just simply hold it up, you know, tape it up to a window where the light comes through. Then you mark the shape, mark off the little X's. Now I tried to do it just by reading my messy little graph here and I ended up pulling it out. So then I decided, all right, I need it in written form. So I opened up Google Docs and I said to myself, self. I have 28 spaces here. I want a border along the edge that is two stitches wide. And I also want a border at the top and the bottom that is two rows wide. So I have 28 stitches and I wanted three stitches on either side of my black border. So I did 28 plus six plus one for a turning chain. I did three rows of my background color, which is this, before I started into my graph. So when I went to Google Documents, I just, I told myself, okay, self, it's all single crochet, so pretty easy. So I chained 35 and my first three rows was 34 single crochets. B stood for background color for me. That's rows one through three. So row four, it was three background, 28 color, three background. Row five, three background, 28 color, three background. And I did it like that. It was much easier for me to follow my pattern. So the, the idea was make my, my pattern. Now you can pick any, you know, silhouette. And the reason I say silhouette is if you're just working with two colors for your first time, it's going to be a lot easier when you're changing colors. So this one I wanted the owl to stand out, so I did the tan background with the black owl. This one, I did a cat, but I did the tan with a cream colored background, and I only did one row with the border. Having a solid silhouette versus all these spaces is definitely much easier because you're not doing as much color changing. And with it being one color, instead of having a bunch of ends to tie off, you can just carry your yarn with you, the color that you're not working with, and pull it up when you need it. So you can see, well, you can see better on this one, on my edges that I carried my yarn with me through the rows. You can kind of see it. I can, I don't know if you can. 
you can kind of see it in here. So the idea, anyways, was if I did nine or 12 of these, stitch them together like you would, you know, your granny square afghan or anything, and make a, a, a throw like that. And because it's on a smaller scale, it's much easier to deal with. The very first one I tried was huge, and I took a picture of one of my daughter's cats that is super popular here on YouTube, and I was going to make her a graph gain out of that. And I'd say I got about, ooh, a fourth of the way done. I had five or six colors, I don't remember. I had uh, black, white, light gray, dark gray, red, and a dark red. I got so confused and so lost and all my stuff was all wonky and not lined up that I just totally scrapped the project. I was like, this is too huge for my first attempt. Let me just set it aside before I'm just totally frustrated. So it's still set aside. Because when you have to pull, when it's, <coughs> excuse me, when it is, you know, say 250 stitches wide and about the fourth row up, you realize you made an error down here and you have to pull all of that out. It's very frustrating. If you start on a smaller scale, we're talking there's 34 stitches. And if I'm here and I realize down here I've made a mistake, it's a whole lot less disheartening to have to pull out that little bit to correct the mistake versus 250 times four. It's a lot of work. So go over this one more time. You're going to go on to Google and find yourself a silhouette. And you're going to get, you can also for free get graph paper and you'll place them on top of each other. Have a light source behind it. Let me see. There we go. With the light source behind it, you can see the, the image and then mark off the shape of the image. Now, of course, because you'll never get it round, you know, curvy edges, but you can get the shape very close. And I think it turned out pretty good. But so X off your spaces, and the, the X's are where your color is going to go, and the plane is where your background will go. And then when I was doing my um, written, this part, as I went, I was marking the direction. Okay, so like my first row, I went to the left, my second row to the right, so that I wouldn't lose track of which way I go, because when you turn, you know, like you're working this direction. So when you turn, you're coming back this way. So you wanna keep everything still lined up. So it's important that if you follow your graph, that you know what direction you're going, because you don't wanna set, and start on this side and go that way. Flip your project and start on this side and go that way. Unless you have something that's perfectly symmetrical, it's not going to turn out right. So you, you work from right to left or left to right, whichever direction that you go. It doesn't really matter which way. Okay. So, but you always have to do it the same direction. So I went from right to left and then left to right, right to right to left, say left to right, right to left, left, or yeah, you know what I mean. Right to left, left to right. I'm getting myself confused. But I, I had to mark up my page 
and I even had like row counts on the side so that I knew where I was at in order to make this, which was much easier to follow. And then when I was on this, because I did everything so close together, especially when I got further down in, I would like mark off what row that I'm on with the piece of paper so that if I'm looking at this, I'm not jumping up here or down into here and ending up with the wrong stitch count. And also because I know that I'm only going to have 34 stitches in a row, each number, like 3 plus 2 plus 4 plus 3 plus 1 plus 3 plus 1 plus 2 plus 1 plus 3 plus 6 plus 2 plus 3 should equal 34. Each row is only 34 stitches. So if you absolutely never have done something like that before where you're changing colors constantly and carrying your yarn, I can do a short little example for you here. Okay, so I'm just gonna make it small. So let me chain. Just chain a few. Okay, so it's always helpful if you do your first row in the back bump, but for time's sake, because that usually takes me a little while to do, um, I'm just going to single crochet in one of the loops here and get a second row going for you. And as always, the very first row into the chain is the most awkward, and for me, it takes the most amount of time to complete a darn row. So we've had rain the last few days here in Florida, and today it is early in the morning and it is already so humid, I feel like I'm melting. Okay, so when you get to your end, of course, you chain one and turn. And say my pattern says I need three background colors, so I'm going to do one, two, three, but I'm not going to complete that stitch. I'm going to bring my color into it to complete this stitch, okay? So I'm going to pull that through. Okay, so that's my tail. When I very first add the tail, I'm going to work that color in as well. So the, my non-working color, I'm going to bring over the top of that so that it comes to the front and complete that stitch. So that, all right, let me do one. One color stitch just so that I can make sure that's in place. Okay. So that left me with my three. One, two, three. And then we start off with our color in the right spot. So I need two. Oh, darn it. Do, do, do. So, yeah. You have it in front here. Okay, so I have one color, 
two color. Now I need to go back to my background, so I'm going to bring that forward. I'm still working over top of my tail. And you know what? I'm like totally screwing this up. Do the background. We do not complete the stitch. We're going to pull our other, our background color through and do our background stitches. Okay, so we're going to chain one and turn. Oh my goodness. Going to bring our, our color with us and we're running the, along the row there. So we're going to do three, one, two, three. We're not going to complete that stitch. We're going to bring up our color pull it through to complete and then we're crocheting over top of that and we need to go back to our background color we don't complete that stitch okay we bring it forward we finalize the stitch with our background color. Tighten that up just a little bit. And make sure we're working over top of it. And so, you know, we successfully changed colors and kept our stitch count because one, two, three and we complete the third stitch with the our second color. Okay. And now say you have done a few rows after a while your yarn does start to get twisted, you know, you might want to occasionally unwind your yarn so you don't end up with a big old tag tangled mess. All right, so we're going to turn again. Okay, we're going to do one. Now let's say we need to, like the middle of my owl, do like say every other stitch. So we're going to say one, not complete. Pull through our, our image color. Go to do one, not complete. Pull through our background color. Don't complete it. Pull through our image color. Don't complete it. Pull through our background color. Don't complete and switch colors again. Don't complete it. Stitch colors again or switch colors again. And, okay, so when you do that, you really start to get a tangle. Um, see how the stitch lined up on top of our stitch with not, you don't complete this, you pull through the other color, it just makes it line up right. And it, you know, puts your things in the right space. 
So pretty much that's it. It's just keeping track of this or keeping track of this. Personally, I find this way easier than this. And then you end up with something like this or something like this. But there's all kinds of silhouettes. Say you wanted to do a horse or a flower. Um, you can do more than two colors, but just as a suggestion, two colors to start off with for your first one will make your life much easier to follow along. And that is all that I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching.